let's go over the ROB swap here. Um, yesterday I released the guide on going from basically level one to all the way to like uh, your end game wilt split firebolt. So the progression was for the planners for the video I released was uh, it went over the planners of going from like hit based like fire hit based split firebolt and then you eventually when you can craft your wilt weapons you switch to wilt firebolt right and then the next step up from that is going to be rob so to get into rob you should already have um like a two crafted weapons starter weapons here but you what you really need is you need the three king slayers i would not do this build until you have three king slayers so start saving for that because these are um, going to be kind of a big, bigger buy. I bought them for 80 FE a piece, but you guys know as soon as I mention anything, they, it, it increases in price. So good luck trying to buy these. But if you can buy three King Slayers, um, you also need a Hero Memory effect on your Relic. The Breakpoint now, now that they changed it, they actually did another stealth nerf here where um, it no longer rounds up to the nearest whole number anymore. So... Uh, the the new breakpoint for this is actually thirty four percent, right? So if you look at like uh, if you look at the calculator here with three king slayers, we're getting six ammo plus six ammo, and if we multiply that by 0.34, we go from plus six ammo to plus eight ammo. So with the six default ammo plus the eight, that is uh, wow, do math, uh, that is fourteen, right? <laughs> that is fourteen total ammo. So um, that's what we're working with. Um, so yeah, th th this is, this is going to be the setup here with the desperate measures, obviously. So obviously you need to be level 80. That was the requirement to switch to wilt based, uh, uh split fire bolt. Uh, so I made a new planner. Let's, we can just look at the new planner I made. So this is going to be the new plan. This is actually, I just edited, the uh, um, the starter ring of blades, planner that I had before we edited it for 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 the new updates to season three and we had to make quite a few tweaks to the build because with the stealth nerfs to like uh desperate measures being lowered from 1.4 multiplier to 1.3 um and the wilt duration being dropped down and, and wilting beam now having a cooldown to it there was a lot of stuff that they just changed um, so we had to, we had to, we had to adapt, right? Like if we make a really good build, we make a really big meta build and it becomes really popular. And then XD decides to nerf me. We need to adapt and, 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 and work around it and, and make it strong again. And then they'll probably nerf me again. And it'll just be a vicious cycle over and over again. But, um, right now, so we, let's go over, let's go over like the gear. The gear didn't really change too much, I think. Um, now skill radius is a little more uh, of uh, important. Skill radius and projectile speed actually with Ring of Blades makes it hit more often. So the faster your projectiles are circling, the bigger, the, the more hits you're gonna get. And the more skill radius you have, the more overlap you're gonna have on your rings. And of course, the, the the next thing here is also minimum minimum channeled stack. So before you switch, that's that, that's that's also another requirement. Another requirement is that you have minimum channeled stacks. Uh, and how are we going to get this? I would start at least with four, but I would say you should have five minimum channeled stacks to start this. The first one is going to be with the wind breath dispersion. This should be pretty cheap. It shouldn't be too expensive, uh, at least at the at the time of of, of recording this video. Um, and then the other one is going to be a channeled stack mod on a crafted amulet, right? So that's the most important parts of this. Like if you can't get that physical skill level, I don't have that yet. You don't have to worry about that. Um, even if it's not in the right base here, I don't even have mine. Like mine, you can see here, it's on the wrong base. But, you know, this is, this is what's important. This is what's important. Plus one minimum channel stack here and here. So two on your gear. And then you're gonna have two. You're gonna have two on your channel preparation here, right? So link to bring your blades is gonna be channel prep. That's gonna be another two, so that makes four. And then the planner doesn't have the new divinity, new god slates yet. But if you go to the new god slates, this is what replaced infinity. Basically, you used to be able to get quick ritual on infinity. 
they removed infinity from the game and gave us this instead to replace it. So in the statue of the new god, you need a pedigree of god slate here that has quick ritual for another plus one, right? So that's five total. That's five total. So that's that's the other requirement. So so requirements are wilt weapons, three king slayers, and like four to five minimum channel stacks and level eighty. So that's pretty much all the requirements I would say. Um, so if you have the two crafted uh, guilt short blades from the split fireball, that's fine. But you can also get pick up a repeated N. Now picking up a repeated N and putting it in your main hand is actually gonna it's actually gonna lower your base wilt damage. You're gonna have less base wilt damage, but it's you're gonna get explody. Enemies are gonna explode on death. So this is better for mapping. It's not better for DPS, it's not better for bossing or single target DPS. It's just better for mapping because they explode. So this is what I used to map. Um what else do we have here? Crossroads is pretty cheap right now. And crossroads is mainly just for the inflict pain right and if inflict inflict pain is a crowd control and we're increasing the crowd control effect through blur so we're getting at actually more than that that 10 percent pain gives it makes enemies take 10 percent more damage you're going to be getting that multiplied by the crowd control effect from blur and then blur effect in uh, addition to that so we have that this is not a requirement but pretty cheap buy you should be able to get it uh the belt's going to have something like damage reduction. It's pretty big in the belt. We can't use um, Light Hunter Belt anymore because Light Hunter Belt is spell damage and we're using... Spell damage doesn't work with our belt. So, what else do we have here? Like Blur Effect here. Uh, the other ring here. So we had the... We were using the Traceless Pain to uh, get that big reap, that like five second reap on the Traceless Pain for the Split Firebolt build for mapping. But I've noticed the Traceless Pain just not really working as well with Ring of Blades. And the reason is, is probably uh, the Split Firebolt build, build was able to stack more wilt on the initial barrage of projectiles. And then the, the, the following reap from the Traceless Pain was doing a lot of damage. But with Ring of Blades, you don't get like those huge wilt stack starting off so it's it just wasn't very good so we're gonna do a crafted ring for now we're gonna do a crafted ring for now um so okay so that's pretty much the gear uh the skills so the skills had to actually change quite a bit from uh the previous version of the build and the reason being is because wilting beam got this got this uh stealth nerf where it now has a cooldown to it right whereas before it didn't have a cooldown it was just proc constantly as long as you had like the, it would proc every time you hit the maximum channel stacks, which if your minimum channel stats, stacks equaled your maximum, then you would basically just proc it on every cast of it, on every tick of it, which was really ridiculous. It was doing way too much damage. So I can understand why they nerfed this. Uh, but to make up for it, so we still have we still have like efficient cast to make this fast. Uh, cooldown reduction, I'm not, actually we dropped, I think we dropped the cooldown reduction. Hold on one sec here. Yeah, we dropped this. Okay. This is... Yeah. So we dropped that. Um, so, Wilting Beam has efficient cast. We, there's a Reaping Agony here. Reaping, reaping Agony uh, just kind of is an extra reap that happens. You can also put Reaping Agony like on the Spiral Strike, right? Before we had uh, Blur as our mobility, we were using Blur. I've changed it up. We're using Spiral Strike now. We gain Hardened, which the Hardened uh, is really powerful. It's like a 20% damage reduction. And then Emergency Avoidance is also another like survivability. You're gonna, we're going to be stacking. We're going to be evasion stacking with this. Quick Mobility, Reaping Agony there, right? Um, Entangled Pain is still here. You can We can switch this to Terrain of Malice now. So now, because we're playing Ring of Blades, we kind of have this aura around us. Of, uh, we have these blades spinning around us. We might as well turn our curse also into an aura effect because they just overlap each other. It makes it easy. You just cast this one time. You're basically uh, tapping Ring of Blades, right? So if you already know how Ring of Blades works, if you've seen the build before, uh, I won't go into it too much here because you can look at my previous Ring of Blade guides to find out how it really works. But we're just tapping this with the snapshot on Desperate Measures where we have the, the all the ammo capacity and we just tap Ring of Blades real quick and we snapshot all the Desperate Measures damage into Ring of Blades. Uh, we're now using added erosion damage because the added erosion damage got buffed to be 
uh, a percentage of your skill base, of your skill damage, converted to base wilt. And then everything else here is the same from the previous version. So we have the blink still. So, so the new tech here is actually holding down wilting beam. And this is our main skill. It's very important you put this in your main skill. If we look in game here, it's the first skill here. Wilting beam is in my first slot. The reason this has to be in your first slot is because cast valve channeling only works on your main skill. When on your main skill, if it's channeled, right? So we're holding down wilting beam to proc the cast valve channeling, and we have four scorching parses here. Now, when you have four scorching parses here, they each have their own cooldown, their own separate cooldown. Normally, a scorching parse has a five second cooldown, but we are stacking cooldown reduction, and we have four separate cooldowns happening here. So, if you see in game here, I'm holding down wilting beam. You see these explosions. Those those fire explosions is the the scorching parse happening, and those are reaping. Those are reaping, right? And the damage of the actual scorching pulse doesn't matter, so we don't even need precise cast valve channeling. Precise cast valve channeling has a, a minus sixty five percent additional damage for the link skill. There's a damage penalty to the link skills, right? But that doesn't matter because we, all we care about is the reap, and the reap is reaping the damage from ring of blades. Okay, so we don't care about having precise cast valve channeling. We also don't even care about the level of Scorching Pulse. These are all level 1. Now in game, if you go in game, they added a new feature. You can go to your inventory, you can click on a skill, you can click on this menu here, and you can reset the level. So you can buy like a level 16 Scorching Pulse, just reset them all to level 1. And then hide the notification to, to uh, there's like a, uh, uh, there's like an X to, to prevent any notification for the level ups for 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 that skill so they're also level one because at level one they only ca they ca they cost less mana it's only a five mana cost here at level one and that means it also reserves less mana so if you like if you try to if you try to put like higher level scorching passes in here it's just going to reserve more mana when you try to reserve when you try to use it with cast while channeling so we, we reserve less mana. We don't care about the damage from the actual Scorching, scorching Pulse. For the auras, we have um, our seal conversion, and we're throwing in precise projectiles. Actually, I need to make changes here. Um, this should be... We added in nimbleness. All right. So I found that... For magical source, a level like 13 magical source was enough mana for me. And you might need more, so just test it for yourself. But if you have like, you know, the 60% mana regen from your pack spirit, you might be, uh, you might only need like 13%, 13, level 13 magical source. Uh, you could always level it up more if you want. But depending on how high you level up your magical source, you can have like a, a, a higher level nimbleness. If you don't need many levels in magical source, nimbleness can be higher. Maybe you get to like level 16 or something like this, right? So it's like whatever you can fit in here for your life reserve. The auto defense is still here. Uh, we still have the frost shield, delayed pain tied to them. But we can also put in two of our two more ores in here. And these are basically like just separate links essentially like you only the, the the auto defense is only working for these two skills so it's like a free link here and then these two are just like extra ores that we're fitting in normally for like our mana reserve so we're able to fit in deep pain and energy fortress this way with the auto defense in the in the same uh in, in the same same passive slot for the talent trees we do want some attack and cast speed i'll explain that later but we do want some attack and cast speed now Skill duration is also pretty good, but sometimes I just prioritize the attack and cast speed here, right? And then we are, like I mentioned before, we want skill radius. More overlapping on the, the Ring of Blades, more more hits, faster hits, right? We can now get the persistent skill level since uh, Ring of Blades counts as a persistent skill. And then we got our source of blur right here. These are the same. These are the same from the split firebolt wilt 
We got the attack and cast speed here. Skill duration is okay to get here. Skill radius. So we have the crowd control effects now. We have our paralyzed. We have our blinded. You're going to need minus sealed mana. Cooldown recovery is good. Uh, we got our only source of affliction right now. And then we are also, we also are using reap much more now with, with our setup. With all the, the wilting beam and the scorching parts going off. We want all the reap stuff. And then blur effect. Uh, Warlock tree. We're still using dirty tricks to guarantee ailments. To guarantee uh, wilt. And then we have indifference here. Indifference here, since we're stacking the attack and cast speed, we're getting the cooldown reduction with this, right? And the cooldown reduction is helping our scorching pass cooldown, our four scorching passes cooldown, as well as uh, helping us blink more often. All right, so um, energy shield, there's attack and cast speed. Take note of the max energy charge here. We get the plus one energy charge. And so, so, so the energy charge, not only does it give us an extra charge for our blink, but it also applies to the scorching pulses. And yes, they actually apply also to scorching pulses that are linked to cast while channeling. So if you have extra energy charges, you will cast these in succession. Uh, um, you, you have more to cast at, at first, right? So like if you, I didn't have any energy charges, I would have cast four scorching pulses in succession, and then they would be on cooldown. But now that if I have one energy charge, and now all of a sudden these have two charges, two charges each, you're going to be casting eight scorching pulses in succession before you have to worry about a cooldown. And we're actually going to have plus two to this, right? It's going to actually be three charges eventually. Make sure you're also getting the ailment damage ignores resistance, and then the plus one all skill levels. Okay, so that's about it here. I think I covered everything. So I'll also cover a little. I'll also cover the divinity slate here, the new god. So because I already mentioned, we really need to have the quick ritual, right? So so yeah, make sure you have that. Um, some of the important slates that you can get here. You want. Additional damage, obviously, so something like this, 8% additional additional damage against cursed enemies, that's pretty big. Any minus sealed mana you can get is good. Attack and cast speed as usual, max energy shield, ailment damage is all just like, always been good for us, it's pretty standard, right? Um, quarter and curry, now this is where the plus, the, 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 the third charge comes. We got another plus one max energy charge here. So now I got my blink. Uh, up to four charges because I have the 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 support the da the magic dash support and then another plus two so plus three we have four blink charges and all of our scorching passes have three charges on them now so four 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 scorching passes with three charges each that's like twelve explosions you can just do uh, in succession before you have to worry about any core down. And then the God stuff, um, I don't know if I should go over how this order and chaos stuff work, but basically, uh, this is additional erosion damage. It's going to end up being, uh, we have some order and some of them are chaos, but either way, whether you get order or chaos, it's still pretty good to get additional erosion damage. And maybe I should go over how to craft these as well. So this one is like, Additional erosion damage for order, and then I have one here that's additional erosion damage, additional damage against enemies at the center of the area for chaos. So we're getting some additional damage here. Uh, reaping duration is good as well. Uh, this one is pretty big. This is, uh, we already have this, wait, where is it? This node. This node, we are, it, it's a limit one, right? It says when max divinity effect is one, it's limit one. So this one, as well as the energy charge node, you can you only have one limit one for this, okay? Um, but we have also this node is 50% blur effect because basically when you reserve all your life, you have 50%, you, you get, you, you, you have 50% of blur effect here. We have this in the tree as well. So it's a total of 100% blur effect between the two. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the 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 new system here with the quick ritual. So you, you these are all these are all goddess of deception slates, right? So maybe we should go over how to actually make these. Uh, you'll be picking up beads while you're mapping. So my Avris code right now I actually went all the way to the left here, just hugged the left side and went down here because these judge, these malice judges, you have a 20% for these to be in your map. When you kill them, most of the time they drop a stack of, um, an extra stack of 300 beads. And these beads, you actually use these beads in the Avers bounty here. These beads right here, right? So when you have these beads from the killing malice judges, you come here, you refresh this, and then you can you need like casting wedges are good. You can buy compasses if you use them, but the divinity fragments you 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 want these to buy new slates. So you buy the divinity fragments. You keep refreshing this. You can buy some more of this. Uh, this is Fe. You keep refreshing. This is Fe. This might be okay to buy, but here's another divinity fragment. We keep doing that, right? And then um, once you spend those, you have you 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 get the beads. You spend the beads on fragments, and then you go to the divinity slate here. And this you can select the goddess of deception. And you can refresh this, and you have the divinity slates to buy here with the uh, with the divinity fragments that you bought with beads, right? Uh, keep in mind though that you can't buy this three hundred cost divinity slate. This slate is a level ninety slate, but this level ninety slate doesn't unlock until you are level ninety five. So you kind of want to wait until you're level ninety five for this, because when you buy these slates. These slates have 12 branding attempts compared to these slates that have eight branding attempts. So you can get, you just, you just have more opportunity. You have more chance of cre making something good when you're buying the level 90 slates here. So you just buy these, refresh the shop when you need to, and just keep buying these, right? So we can take, go to our inventory and check these out. These are the level 90 slates, guys of deception, and they have 12 branding attempts. And you're looking for something pretty good here. You're looking for like, um, well, if you look at like my previous made slates here, you know, I was looking for stuff like, uh, I think it's just the top two that show up, right? Yeah. So this one already had like the blur effect up here, which this was a really good starting one to use because it had already that 50% blur effect. Uh, I saw this one with the additional curse, a uh, damage against cursed enemies that was really big, and this one came with the. Uh, did this one really start with a? Yeah, this one actually started with uh, the max energy charge as well. Some of these were just really strong starting off. I, I tended, I tend to wait to till I find something really good like this to start crafting with, right? But let's just craft. Let's just craft with one that's not maybe as good. Uh, I might have something better in my stash here. Max energy shield is there. Attack and skill duration. Uh, cast speed. Um, blur effect ailment duration. I, I actually like this one. Okay. And it's better sometimes to find the ones that are purple nodes because the purple nodes are uh, the medium nodes. They're a little bit more strong. They're a little more powerful, right? But let's just let's just make an example out of this one. 12 branding attempts, uh, not the best starting stats, but I can use them. So we just brand this. We, since we have a lot of attempts, you do need to make sure you're getting those casting wedges. Uh, those casting wedges you can also get from like the, the, the beads, right? From the, from the, from the NPC there, from the cube NPC. But if you have a lot of attempts like this, you have 12 attempts. Your first brands that show up here don't really matter as much. This is good though, right? We want this. You could always revert things, but I recommend just kind of hitting brand until you fill this up because you're going to upgrade them anyways, right? So I hit brand there. I had a chance to upgrade that and I upgraded that blue node to a purple node. Uh, but it was my max energy shear node that upgraded to Terra charge recovery speed. This node is useless for me. 
So I'm just going to revert this. You can just hit revert, go back to that run. You can go back to the max energy shield here, right? Add. Here we go. We got spell damage at low mana. Again, we uh, use this for us because spell damage doesn't work with wilt damage, with our with our wilt. So I got to revert that one as well. Brand, brand. This one pops up. Affliction is good. But yeah, you're basically hitting brand until you... The, the, the blue nodes just keep all the blue, blue nodes because eventually the, the goal here is to upgrade the blue nodes into purple nodes anyways. So even if you get a blue node that's not useful, I wouldn't revert it if you have a lot of attempts remaining. And you know, a good a good slate, if you get lucky, is going to just have like all, purple, all three purple nodes here. So we have like five more attempts here and each attempt has a 50% chance to upgrade these blue nodes into a purple. So we're going to hit this. We got this one, 24% dot damage. That's good. So I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to revert this. Hit brand again. Attacking cast speed. That's good. I'm going to keep that. Hit brand again. Fail. Brand there. So, so we got all the purple nodes we wanted. Um, this is energy shield charge and additional energy shield charge interval. Not my favorite, but you can keep it. You can, I mean, this is fine. And then after that's done, then you just have a chance of getting... The new god talents. Normally, I, I every time I every time I hit this, I'm just getting like the. I just all I see is like the, the chaos and order, mods that happen. Right. So that's like our first craft there. Not the best, but you kind of have to keep doing that until you get something really good, right? It's just all kind of uh, luck based right there. All right. So yeah, make sure you guys check the updated planner for the starter ring of blades. Um for the for the new for the for, for it's been updated for season three so make sure you guys check the new planner um i'll continue to kind of like keep pushing this build uh and 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 getting getting it getting uh getting it upgraded right now so so i started i had 320 mil dps with split firebolt wilt before i switched so at 320 mil, and then I switched to the, the ROB setup, and I was breaking, now I'm at 1.2 billion. 1.2, 1.3 billion DPS, right? So it seems, Ring of Blades seems to be still really good. Um, there were some concerns about a lot of people trying out Ring of Blades before I could get there, before I had switched, and they were saying like they couldn't get it to work. They only had like 5 mil DPS, and it just was really bad. Um, but I think there was some, maybe some user error there that some people might not have been setting up correctly. But I have finally gotten in there and it does work. I've confirmed it works. Of course, we had to make some tweaks to it because it was weaker if you were using the old version of the Ring of Blades build. It, it did get nerfed. It became weaker. So we had to, we had to tweak the build to, to accommodate that and to get our damage back. So that's why now we have like the cast while channeling with with the uh scorching bosses and now we're also stacking attack and cast speed we're, we're using spiral strike and we're getting cooldown reduction through indifference right the biggest difference is there where before we were just using blur i'll show you guys the dps real quick um with the two guilt short blades i have more damage than the than using like repeated end uh, if you see here, like with these two weapons with uh, the high skill damage to base skill damage. Right now I have um, some tier 1 skill skill damage to base skill damage on these weapons. So these weapons, if I check my base skill tier for Ring of Blades, I have 479 base wheel damage. Now the base wheel damage is going to be lower when you switch to Ring of Blades because Split Firebolt just has more base skill damage. So when you convert it, it Split Firebolt shows more than Ring of Blades. Um, but my Ring of Blades actually is missing like one level, I think. If you look at my Ring of Blades, I've been leveling this. Yeah, it's level 19. We have 19 plus 2 right now, so it is missing a level. But um, we can see here, if we look at switching to the repeated end, we go from 479 and we put this in our main hand and we lose a little bit here. We go down to 407, right? So it's not that big, I guess. If you do like the calculation for this. So 479 from the 407. Or let's do 407. 
479. So there I'm losing uh, like 15% of my damage. 15%. So it's not too terrible. It's not too terrible. Um, this is, I'm not going to talk, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about this. But this, it, okay, I'll talk about this. I, I'm just worried about prices, you know, it's just being all of a sudden like crazy. Um, this reads that if you reserve all your life, it reads that you have 200% additional erosion damage, which is not the case. It's wrong. It's wrong. So either this, 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 this is wrong. It's not giving me 200% additional erosion damage, right? Because if it was giving me 200% erosion damage, it would be a times free multiplier. I would all of a sudden just be doing three times more damage with this, but that wasn't the case. I bought it thinking that it might be, but it's not. I mean, it sounds too good to be true, obviously. So it wasn't true. Um, it's either, it's either going to be like, it's either, it's mistranslated. It's either 200, it's either 200 non-additional erosion damage, which is, they've made that mistake in the past where they said additional and it wasn't additional. So they made that mistake in the past. It could be 200 just erosion damage, non-additional erosion damage. But what I think it is actually, is I think they got the numbers flipped around here. They've done that also in the past. So both mistakes have happened. So it's hard to know exactly. I think this is 5% additional erosion damage for every missing 10% missing life, right? So that would be like 50% additional damage. And I think it's, I think that checks out. It seems like I'm, get, I'm getting about 50% additional damage from these boots. So they're pretty big boots, but the problem is I didn't, I didn't include it in the starter guide because they, they can be a bit expensive. Uh, they're, you know, anytime you're trying to get like a targeted corrosion, uh, the prices are going to be quite high. But, um, you know, these boots don't work unless you have this corroded. And um, these boots also just give nothing else of value, really. Uh, you know, very little evasion. We could use evasion for this build, but it gives very little. Um, the move speed, I mean, we're not, we don't really care about move speed because there's spiral striking everywhere. And, and then we get this minus 12 elemental resistance. So overall, these boots, the only thing these boots are good for is like that 50% additional. Uh, but I'll show you guys the DPS I have right now with this. With uh, the, the the max DPS setup for me is with these boots and then two crafted guild short blades right now. So if we do this. Now the rotation here is going to be to cast both Entangled Pain and Ring of Blades right away. Just tap them and then hold down Wilting Beam, right? And actually if I want to get my damage procs up, I need to like use my mobility skill here. So it needs to be like mobility skills, tap, channel, and just beam it. And you'll see all these explosions. And uh, if I do that, you know, it's like 1 1.3, 1 to 1 1.5 uh, um, billion DPS. Now, we'll get, we do have kind of like a front-loaded DPS there uh, just because the scorching pulses are going to explode until they run out of charges. But you can see there, I had quite a bit, right? Like, um, because we have those, we have three charges per per scorching pulse, and we have four scorching pulses. If they're all cooled down and all the charges are ready, we're just going to explode like twelve times in in succession here, like this, and then eventually, like we're going to go on cooldown, and then every time we go on cooldown, we're going to explode for another four times, and it's going to go on cooldown again, right? So. After a while, our sustained DPS isn't going to be as high because we're just doing those four explosions uh, when the when the when the uh, when the cooldown is up. But you know, the having burst damage, having those charges, having burst damage available is pretty beneficial. Like in actual gameplay, like you're not always using your charges. You're going to use them when you need to kill something that's big, and then you're going to have your charges ready, right? Or you're going to run into the map and then the map boss and all of a sudden you're going to have your charges ready and you're going to have that burst damage. So it, it works out pretty well. It works out pretty well. But you can see here that the build is working. I have over a billion DPS right now. I gain DPS from switching from the split firebolt build, build split the split firebolt wilt build. So, so far so good even with the nerfs to to like desperate measures and, and, and wilt damage and so forth. We still, I think the build is still very viable. We'll work on optimizing this as much as possible and uh, uh, get back to you guys with the advanced version of the build eventually. And then we will have to make new build guides.